Greetings to you from Rivers of Living Water Cathedral, 604 Holland Street in Fremont, Ohio. Thank you for joining with us today. May God's word be a blessing to you. Join me as we hear what the Lord has given to our own deacon, Mark Heyman. Amen. Amen. She sends her greetings. Amen. Um, she has some problems with her mobility. Her spirits are great. Yes. Okay, yes, and yes. She wants to send your love to all of you. Um, I guess the accumulation of this came when they, I don't know, back in early spring when you said you, I was going to talk. I thought, okay, what's the topic? And I thought, what appropriate topic? for the times, integrity. Amen. Yes. And it fit in with something I was been trying to do, um, even though I'm a retired teacher and educator, for those of you who don't know. I'm the advisor for the you know, Fellowship of Christian Athletes at Rossford High School. And uh, <laughs> through the pandemic, we weren't able to meet because I wasn't allowed in school. So I was preparing something from principles of success for athletes and students. And integrity was one that comes to the mind, and I had done the research for it. I had done the background, I thought, and then I did the biblical research. Mm -hmm. And so this prompted me, gave me the opportunity to put this all together. Okay? So which is one I probably will give some time to them when we meet. Well, normally we just do lessons, but this will be some time. I usually once in a while give a presentation. So you and my guinea pigs and the trial oh, right. All right, so let's talk about integrity. integrity. Because there's certainly a lack. Of it. Amen. Personal view. Personal lack of it in our society. Total lack of integrity mm -hmm. by a lot of people. Okay? Something I saw recently and I wrote it down and saw wear integrity like a uniform. Okay? It was on an NFL jersey. And I thought, how appropriate. Yes. Because the jersey speaks to the team and what they represent. And when we put this on there, that should be what we represent as Christians. Amen. Okay? Now, simple thing you've learned. It takes a lifetime to build and only a second to destroy. Amen. And you can see that with people that are in the public eye all the time. They do something and their integrity is completely shot. Okay? All right. Okay, so when I researched this, I looked at it and found about God's integrity, first of all. Where should we look first? To our Creator. And the integrity. So God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man, that he should repent. Has he said, and will he do not do? Or has he spoke, and will not make good? Okay? And I think many of you, he's spoken to us many times. I don't hear his voice, like my voice, my wife says sometimes, but she used to tell me that, but these thoughts will pass through my brain, and it'll say, where did that come from? And the answer has to be from God. Yes. Okay? Okay. A vow, an oath, and a pledge. Uh, Moses spoke to the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. If a man makes a vow to the Lord, or swears an oath to bind himself by some agreement, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. So what God says to us, he's going to do. That's his integrity, divine integrity. Okay? In the hope of eternal life, which God cannot lie, promised before time. He promised that. He made this promise of eternal life to us, and he will not break that. How does the Lord judge integrity? The Lord shall judge the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity within me. 
And there's a popular saying, you know, that I injected here that I've heard for many years. Do what you say and say what you do. So if you say you're going to do it, if you say that's what you are, you've got to live that out in front of all the people you in front of. Okay, all your students, all your athletes, all the adult members of the community, everyone. Divine integrity, in the hope of eternal life, which God cannot lie, promised before time. So this is what he, he's promised to us for eternity. This, so that's the integrity he, he, he speaks forth, spoke it forth, and that's what he'll do for us. Now, the Lord judges integrity. The Lord shall judge the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity within me. In me. Okay? And the popular saying is, do what you say, and, I'm sorry, and do what you do, will do. Okay, integrity example. And they said, you shall not be, you have not cheated us or oppressed us, nor you have taken anything from a man's hand. That is from Samuel, and they talked about him, where they couldn't judge him. He was a very righteous man. His integrity was very strong with them. The persistent integrity. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, who, <clears throat> one who hold, fears God and shuns evil, and still holds fast to his integrity, mm -hmm. although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause? So God was judging his integrity, and he found that he was a very righteous and Amen. upstanding man. Okay. And they said, oh, it's just not dancing, is it? There we go. Okay, Julia. <laughs> i got to thank Julia for this, okay? <laughs> this is, I think, the third PowerPoint we've done together. I have no understanding how to do that. She's very, I put this together and she does. You're doing good. Okay. Uh, integrity the basics. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul unto an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. That's what God is talking about us. What we must practice. Amen. Yes. Okay. Practicing deceit. Okay. We see that in evidence every day, I guess, for eternity throughout the whole course of the world. But it's very prevalent today. He who works the seat shall not dwell within my house. Wow. Wow. That's a pretty powerful statement. He who tells lies shall not continue in my presence. Boy. That's, I don't know. I mean, if people in conscience, if, they, if they're a Christian... And they see that statement. Wow. Wow. You've got to be speaking the truth all the time, and you've got to be practicing what you preach. Amen. Whoops. Uh oh. <laughs> what did I do wrong, Julia? <laughs> Start that. Zoom it or something. Is this good or what? <laughs> Is this good information? Yes. Is this wonderful information? Hallelujah. This, Hallelujah. this fails me to go back to old school. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Talking about generosity, okay, and we have a lot of what I call I me's. I me. People who are about I, I me, everything they talk about. You listen to their speech and you learn the words they say, particularly the pronouns they use, and you can tell they're all about themselves. Okay? So we need to be generous. We've got to be giving. God has given so much to us that He expects us to be generous with others. Okay. So he deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Okay? You ride discretion. 
you will approach things very carefully. Okay, mercy and truth. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on a tablet of your heart. So to find favor and high esteem in the sight of God. Mercy and truth. We are to have mercy on others. And we are to be truthful for others. That's Amen. his command. Okay, that should motivate us for our integrity. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity, perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. Okay, the righteous man walks with his integrity, his children are blessed after him. So the children of a righteous man will be blessed. in practice. Speak truth to one another. Be truthful, always. And they say the truth hurts sometimes, and perhaps it does, but it needs to be known. These are the things that you should do. Speak each man the truth to his neighbor. Give judgment in your gates for truth, justice, and peace. Truth, justice, and peace. Let none of you think evil in your heart against your neighbor. Repeat. Let none of you think evil your heart against your neighbor and do not love a false oath for these things I hate says the Lord he who is faithful in the least is faithful also in much and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much so whom God has given much, much is expected. Yes. God gives us much, much is expected from us. Repay no one evil for evil. Oh, yes. you've ever had those moments? We all have. Yes. If, you, if, <laughs> if you haven't, you haven't lived long enough yet. But sooner or later, <laughs> there is someone that's going to provoke you to say, oh, I wish I could lash out. That's not what the Lord is saying. Amen. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. Look for the positive. I used to talk to my students and players about that. football. Look at the positive. Avoid the negative. Look at the positive. Focus on that. Better the poor person who lives with integrity than the rich one who distorts right and wrong. Better the poor per person who lives with integrity than the rich one who distorts right and wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay? Therefore, put away lying. Let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. That happened in baptism, and that happened probably to many of us in confirmation, or whatever, acceptance of the Lord or on our own as an adult, or in a, at least a teenager. <laughs> Integrity brings success, but a generous man devises, devises generous things, and by generosity he shall stand. Finally, in heaven, and in their mouth was no deceit, for they were without fault before the throne of God. Okay, so he will be judged for your deceitfulness in eternity. Okay, summary. This is the kind of things we talk about and I would talk about with students and athletes. Okay, integrity means committed to Christ-like wholeness, both privately and publicly. You can't behave one way privately, and the opposite in public. Amen. Because your integrity is shot. Amen. Oh, my God. Live without gaps. There should be no gaps between what you do and what you say. 
Who are you when no one's looking? That one's when you were supposed in the locker room. And we talked about integrity. Who are you when no one's looking? Coach isn't looking, teacher isn't looking, mom and dad aren't looking, so I can do this. Okay, I'm speaking from the youthful experience here. That is true for us adults also. Yes, sir. Transparent, authentic, honest, trustworthy. Four key words there. Are you transparent? People see through you and see the good. Are you authentic? Are you honest? And are you trustworthy? You should be the same in all situations. All, all situations. Your integrity. You maintain that. Act the same when no one is looking at you. Do the, when all eyes are on you. Act the same when no one is looking as you do when all eyes are on you. Amen. 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 And integrity is another be best description of this is weaving your private world together with your public world. <laughs> okay? What you believe privately, you should see publicly. Integrity takes a lifetime to build and a second to lose. In today's parlance, I guess it still was, a few years ago when I was still teaching and coaching, this is the real deal. I used to talk about an athlete or something or a person. They are a real deal. So they're a person of great integrity. They do what they say and they say what they do. We are one decision away from being stupid. <laughs> Amen. Boy, isn't that true. I don't know about you, but we've all, I know, I've done some stupid things, okay? And I used to tell my students, they used to say, well, they're stupid. I said, no, human beings are not stupid, but we do do stupid things. <laughs> okay? And we're only one decision away from that sometimes. Hypocrisy occurs, hypocrisy, well, they're a hypocrite. You've heard people say that. It occurs when a gap exists between your public and your private life. It all comes out eventually. Okay? Two key, two key ingredients are honesty and truth. And then I found in another reading I was doing, it's also loyalty and faithfulness come in there. Those are the key ingredients. Honesty, truth. Being honest, being truthful. Okay? And being loyal. Loyal to God. Loyal to, loyal to your fellow man or community. And faithfulness. A person's reputation is what other people think about him or her. A person's reputation. We're talking about the difference between reputation and character. And we would talk about, I'll talk about everybody, but since I was my experience, talking about young people. You know, you have a reputation. That's what other people think. But the real important thing is your character. Amen. A person's character is what God knows about him or her. Okay? Deference to my wife, who's a big Notre Dame fan. I found that was reading uh, some coaches' wisdom the other and found Newt Rockley was the one that gave it. Yeah. It was sort of that. I thought it was very good. I found that before I found it was associated with him. Okay? Person's character is what God knows about him or her. So God doesn't care about your reputation. That's man made. Mm -hmm. What he cares about is your character. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much Ooh. for your time. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Deacon Hing. If you've been enlightened or challenged by this word today, Friend us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be notified the next time that we post. We invite those who live in the Fremont, Ohio area to join us in person on Wednesday evening at 6.30 for a time of studying God's Word and building your foundation in Him. Or come next Sunday at 10 a.m. for a time of family worship. We're located at 604 Howland Street in Fremont. This week we are having a prayer work Bible we invite you out every evening at 7 o'clock, starting on Thursday evening, Friday evening, Saturday evening, and then Sunday morning we're going to wrap it up. 
but we invite you, if you're able to come, please feel free to come and join us. Intercessory prayer warriors faithfully take every prayer request to the Lord. Send your prayer request or any financial blessing to us at Post Office Box 1323, Fremont, Ohio, 43420. You can also go to our website, rolwohio.com, where you can contact us using email, you can link to our social media posts, or you can link to our PayPal account. We look forward to hearing from you, and remember, there is no God like our God, no one.